Well, welcome back guys. As you can see, we're getting to the final stages of the build here. And I'm going to show you the transformation we're going to have on the red oak that we have used for the rafters when we start applying the water seal and let you see the color of the red oak. It's going to match along with the cedar really well. And we did end up with 37 courses running from the bottom to the top of the gable. And then on our side walls, we have ended up with 28 courses to make our height. So everything turned out great there. And I'm going to paint the bottom of these before we get them put in place. But that is going to be some nice material to be sitting on top of the rafters for our purlings. And we'll also finish our eaves as well as our gutter boards with this stuff too. So let's get started. I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you have enjoyed the video process. Uh, we've had some of the worst weather we've had all year trying to get through it. Today will be no exception. A lot of wind and we're going to try to get through as much of it as we can before the rain gets here. Let's get started. Give you guys the view looking through the window. Now getting this sealed up before we cover it will be a tremendous advantage in the years to come because this will have a lot of sunlight on it throughout the day and this Thompson's water seal will protect that pretty good for us. some of this and I gotta move my ladder. Now, if you haven't seen the entire series, every bit of this that we have used here for the build has been milled from our property. And we use the HM126 bandsaw to cut all this stuff out. Wow, that looks great. get a little bit more of this painted up guys and I'll bring you back to show you what's going on. It's going to be a great little workspace.
All right, I'm gonna refill my paint bucket. If you're deciding to build something like this, sit down and take your time with your plans and get everything where you need it. If you're milling your own material, then you'll do like I've done and go back and forth to the mill when you need something specific. Very big advantage of having that mill setting back there and needing to cut something down to make it fit the building or wanting a different look from a log and being able to mill a different log to get to where we're at here. Tremendous advantage. Now on the inside walls here, we're going to let this stuff season a little bit before we finish the inside. We'll have it protected from the rain with the roof on, so it can set in here and season a little bit in the sun, and then we'll probably go ahead and cover the walls up. Another big advantage of owning our own sawmill now is if we have trees fall due to storms or something like that, we now have a way of utilizing the trees and turn it into material that we can do projects like this with. It, uh, it really is a benefit of having our own mill setting back there for when we need it. side done now and that window sill turned out really nice. guys we're gonna wrap this video up I wanted you to see the process of bringing the true color of this wood to light you've all sat patiently through the videos that we have been making back here with both the chainsaw mill and now the bandsaw mill and every bit of this material throughout the video process you guys have got to see being made and this We'll make both our purlings and also cover up for our eaves and gutters running down both sides. I really thank you guys for following us through the process. This has been an interesting build and we're definitely glad to see us setting down here. Thanks for watching guys. We're going to get this done before the rain hits. Hopefully, I'll talk to you on the next one.